Skull and Bones, which is a chapter of the Illuminati, and uh, that they have rituals with satanic uh, undertones. Um, one of the things that they do is, is lay in a pile of manure when they're being initiated and, and say all of their sexual exploits. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, Satan causes his minions to do degrading things that they think for some reason because their minds get warped that this is something great. Um, they, uh, the Bush family is uh, related, it's one of those families that's related back to British royalty. Mm -hmm. And um, Bush was head of the CIA. And I think it's uh, significant to point out if our listeners haven't um, caught it already, they may have already uh, noticed this themselves, but uh, you had the head of the KGB, you know, the KGB has been uh, running uh, R Russia and the USSR, and over here we had the head of the CIA, George Bush, who becomes president, and now his son is, is running. Um, uh, it, it should make people realize that, in at least, that the intelligence agencies have co-opted these countries. But it's it's deeper than that because uh -huh. the intelligence agencies are being used as a front for these powerful families. And there's literature out there that talks about how the intelligence agencies have been prostituted to these powerful uh, these powerful families. In fact. KGB intelligence, a large share of their intelligence, is simply being used to spy on on Western industry and companies so that they can take all these trade secrets back for a Russian capitalist or, or Russian gangsters, I should say. Wow, truly incredible. Um, also, Fritz, I wanted to, I wanted to, I remember this also from your talks over the weekend. I don't want people to think that you're like the only person out there talking about it, and not just today, but I mean throughout history. I remember you mentioned how Senator McCarthy, most people think out there that McCarthy was just uh, afraid of communists, but it's really, do you, from what your research, Fritz, do you really think that was the case? No, it wasn't the case. I mean, I, had, I was like everybody else. I only knew what I'd been told until I started reading uh, speeches and talks and things that he had written and I was blown away. I realized the man knew exactly that there were these powerful families, that there was a world order and he was going after these powerful families. That's why he went after the Bundys mm -hmm. and of course uh, the Illuminati kingpins in, in our government thwarted um, an investigation into Bundy. Um, yeah, he he really understood, and so he, because he uh, was after these powerful people, these movers and shakers, they ha have used him as a verbal punching bag. I mean, I've, I've watched, I don't know how many people um, uh, denigate his name, even, you know, in the last few years. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think the guy is, has been dead for a long time, they'd forget him, but Bill Clinton has, has, um, used them a as a punching bag and uh, and then George Bush so um, it's almost they almost the Illuminati almost use him as an example like uh, if you come after us this is what's going to happen to you isn't that correct <laughs> yes yes that's totally horrible well I know we've just got a few minutes left now for sure but before we go I wanted to ask you Fritz how can we, as normal, everyday people, recognize perhaps the policies or the agendas which are pushed on us through the Illuminati front organizations? Oh boy, that's a good question, but it's also a big question. Mm -hmm. um, well, you will see that there are certain things that are politically correct. And you will also and no notice that the world is going towards central control. Right. It's going towards globalization, where we're having the United Nation. You know, the United Nations was formed out of the League of Nations, and there's a continual push to have one political, one world government. Now, isn't that just a natural evolution of uh, perhaps human society? 
I mean, as the world seems to be getting smaller and smaller through technology, most people would say that would just be a natural evolution of our whole government system. Well, it's um, it's definitely being pushed, mm -hmm. and uh, whether one wants to believe that the natural outgrowth of improved communication and transportation, that's up to the individual, but it is definitely being pushed. It's taking a lot of money and um, a lot of effort to make it happen, and the push behind it are these global elite families that are controlling things from behind the scenes. So not only do we have political globalization, but we have economic globalization and we have religious globalization. So when you see any kind of an agenda that contributes to this one world order, or as the Ed Bush has called it, new world order, or, you know, Hitler, who was also of these bloodlines, also referred to New World Order. Uh, th that seems to be a popular term with them. Right. And, and I yeah. noticed earlier, uh, when you had mentioned it, you just said World Order, that you didn't put the new in there. Why is that? Because it's not new at all. Uh, in fact, they keep using the same formulas. The things that controlled people back in ancient Rome, you know, where they had bread and circus, mm -hmm. they're using the, the same formulas uh, that they used in antiquity f on us today. And bread and circus simply means that if you give the common person entertainment and plenty of food, like the junk food we get, they'll be happy. <laughs> Most people, as long as they have their beer and their football game, are happy. Unfortunately, that is true. Well, I tell you what, Fritz, I really appreciate you coming down here, taking time out of your busy schedule to come give us an interview, and I look forward to having more talks with you in the future. Thank you. It's great being with you. Order, order, order. <laughs> 